This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to talk about how to stop a 51% attack against Bitcoin, how to stop it instantly. So quick review, 51% attacks are not as dangerous as many people believe. For example, they cannot be used to rewrite the whole Bitcoin blockchain. They can't be used to print fake Bitcoin or increase the Bitcoin maximum supply of 21 million. They cannot be used to steal your Bitcoin or change any of the consensus rules. They cannot be used to make a lot of money from double spends either, so it's unlikely that a profit-minded attacker would ever use one of these. All the 51% attacks can do is to annoy people by making Bitcoin transactions take longer, they can censor certain transactions, or they can temporarily stop all Bitcoin transactions by mining a series of empty blocks that do not contain transactions. To do a 51% attack, a government will need to buy, build, or steal a lot of Bitcoin mining rigs, which are also called ASICs. This is basically impossible to do without the world noticing. And so for an in-depth analysis of why this is true, I'll refer you to this video, which you should probably watch before watching the rest of this video if you're not familiar with these arguments. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit the like and subscribe button to also help support this channel's mission of Bitcoin education. But let's say, let's assume that a powerful government is actually able to get its hands on many billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin mining rigs or ASICs. Again, it's not the billions of dollars that's hard for a government to get, since especially governments like the US government can just print a lot of US dollars. It's actually these mining rigs, these ASICs, that are hard to get. And they're the only machines that can be used to attack Bitcoin. You cannot attack it with CPUs or GPUs anymore. The network hash rate is just too high. So what happens when Bitcoiners learn that a 51% attack is on the horizon because they see, they get wind of through social media, they get wind of uh, the fact that a government has been accumulating, stealing, or buying Bitcoin mining machines, or if Bitcoiners learn that a 51% attack has already started, they start to see a series of empty blocks, for example. Now let's assume that all mining rigs on US soil are now under the control of the US government and are engaging in this 51% attack. This would not be totally true because for example, if you or I are running a Bitcoin mining machine in our garage, it would not be collaborating with the US government, presumably to attack Bitcoin. But let's just assume that all the mining rigs on the US in the on US soil are collaborating and on the side of the government. What happens then is Bitcoin core devs create one line of code that blacklists miners with US-based IP addresses and whitelists miners with overseas IP addresses. Now, Bitcoin core devs have the power to change the Bitcoin core software, but they still do not control Bitcoin. And this is a really important point to emphasize. That's because these devs cannot force these guys to run their software. So they can change the software. They can make it into anything they want, but you have to convince all these people running Bitcoin nodes, most of which own Bitcoin and, very, and care very deeply for the project and they are economically incentivized to care for it. You have to convince them to run this software and they're never gonna run the software. I will never run bad Bitcoin software that somehow hurts me. But in a situation like this, you can be sure that full nodes like my, my own would be happy to run a patch like this that neuters what the US government is doing. So again, Bitcoin core devs do not have the power to force Bitcoin nodes to run the new software. But in this case, we can be pretty sure that Bitcoin nodes run by people who own Bitcoin, like myself, will be really glad to run this new code that cuts out the 51% attacker. And so we see with one line of code, Bitcoin devs have just neutered the US government and all of its mining rigs, all $10 billion worth of them. And this would be a global advertisement for how unstoppable the Bitcoin network is. And this would lead to the perverse effect of having an increased Bitcoin adoption everywhere, which is certainly not what an attacking government wants to see. But wait, there's more. In an empty block attack, uh, which is a subset of a 51% attack where you just mine em empty blocks that don't have any transactions in them, and it's basically a denial of service attack. In, a, in an empty block attack situation, mempools, which are these waiting rooms for transactions that have not yet been confirmed and included in a block, mempools would fill up with unconfirmed transactions bidding competition to get into the next real block. So for example, if an attacker had 51% of the hash rate, he could mine 51% of the blocks, but 49% of the blocks would still be accepting transactions and packaging up transactions. 
even if the Bitcoin miner had 99% of the hash rate, there'd still be 1%. So there would be some blocks that would be available that you could try to get into. And people who really need to transact on the Bitcoin, who really need to trans transact on the Bitcoin blockchain would, uh, would bid up, uh, would, would use really high transaction fees to try to get into the next block. Bitcoin transaction fees could then rise to the point where Bitcoin miners are getting paid something like, well, right now the, the miner, the block subsidy, subsidy is 6.25 Bitcoin and transaction fees are very a small part of the Bitcoin miner reward. But if we get a bidding war to get into the block because there are only a few blocks you can get into, you can see transaction fees rising to the point where Bitcoin miners are getting paid 10 to 15 Bitcoin just to include these transactions in their block. And the only way you get this, the empty block attacker would not be getting these because he or she did not include those transactions in their block. So you'd have a situation here where Bitcoin transaction fees actually get higher than the block reward. And then these juicy transaction fees would incentivize more honest and economically minded Bitcoin mining rigs to plug in. If enough, to, if enough honest mining rigs do this, the attacker will no longer have 51% of the hash rate and the attack will end. Now, what else could Bitcoin core devs do if the nodes support them in a crisis situation like this? Bitcoin core devs can make some other changes to the software that bricks all SHA-256 ASICs. They could change the required block header formatting. They could switch proof of work algorithms from SHA-256 to another SHA algorithm, for example, hashing algorithm. Then suddenly all of the US government's mining rigs would become completely useless. Now this would hurt honest Bitcoin miners and their machines as well, but the Bitcoin network would survive. Then Bitcoin devs could work together with overseas ASIC manufacturers to make a small tweak to their new machines that allows them to mine Bitcoin, but still excludes the old ASICs, which are owned by the US government or whatever the attacker is. ASIC manufacturers are incentivized by their business model to keep Bitcoin mining going and to side with the honest Bitcoin miners and Bitcoin core devs. If these ASIC manufacturers are overseas, could the US government stop them? What if these ASIC manufacturers are located in China? Do you think that the Chinese government is going to want to do anything to help the US government? It could be in another country besides China as well. Uh, but this is, this is how the game theory works. And people who are profiting from Bitcoin are really incentivized to help each other. Now, this would definitely be a turbulent time for Bitcoin. The price would initially fall. A lot of hash rate would leave the network. And it might be necessary to do a hard fork if accepted by all the full nodes, of course, to decrease the mining difficulty if we're stuck at too high a difficulty target for the next 2016 blocks. And we'd be stuck there permanently because so much hash rate has left the network or so much honest hash rate has left the network. So it might be necessary to do a hard fork like this, which we want to reserve for extreme crisis situations. Bitcoin network might temporarily have to switch to being secured by CPUs or GPUs like in the old days, but Bitcoin would survive and it would emerge stronger on the other side. Bitcoin, this is the thing, Bitcoin has a very strong social layer that's smart, that's increasingly wealthy, that is ethical, and that will do everything in its power to defend Bitcoin. Nobody is just going to sit on the sidelines and watch Bitcoin die. And this is what so many Bitcoin critiques and so much Bitcoin FUD assumes. It assumes that wealthy, smart, active people are just going to sit on the sidelines or just lie down and allow their thing to be destroyed. This is not going to happen. Bitcoiners are passionate. They're smart. They're activists. Unlike the lazy government bureaucrats who'd be trying to attack Bitcoin, Bitcoiners are much more passionate than people who punch the clock working for the US government nine to five. And once the attack was over and the world saw the Bitcoin network still operating as usual, there would be a mad rush to get some of this special money, BTC, that even a nation state attacker was unable to stop. So Bitcoin, 51% of taxes is not something that I actively worry about. And I think Bitcoin would be fine if one ever occurred and Bitcoin would emerge as it always does from these, these attacks it would emerge much, much stronger on the other side. And it would really be a huge strategic blunder for any government to, att to uh, attempt this. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.